Welcome back to the Lads Talk podcast. Before we start anything, there have been a lot of comments on our community tab uh, and in general on our videos. And obviously, I just wanted to read one that I wanted to read last week, but uh, I forgot to be honest. Yeah, but one of these um, comments was quite in depth. Okay, uh, and it was about marriage. Okay, so they said, in my opinion, marriage is portrayed as outdated by the West mainly by the younger generation this is due to the rising population you could say there is a rising competition however in my opinion the problem when it comes in marriages is not marriage itself as it's very easy but it's actually divorce people nowadays get married generally for looks and not for their personality but the solution in my opinion would be before going for marriage one should look at themselves and then build up on your personality in a good way as good men will meet good women and bad men meet bad women when you are a good person, you will automatically be resistant to evil and doing that, you are now not attracted to bad women. As to find bad women, you have to go find them in bad, filthy places, which I will not name. You get the idea, they said. Yeah, it's a massive comment, honestly. Yeah, and, I um, saw Daniel said there was a lot of people on YouTube. What, that exact thing? Yeah, exactly. It's exactly that. But, but he just went in deep explanation. Yeah. He, he went so full deep. He went essay you mode. You have to be honest, man. Like, look um, at the teacher's perspective. For, what, what for, okay, from a, from a teacher's perspective, I would mark this a solid uh, 84 out of 100, okay? 84 out of 100. Um, All right, first class. Very good structure in the answer. Uh, the comment is very well thought out as well. Um, where where he, uh, the comment could improve is uh, maybe talk about how amazing I am. Uh, maybe insult Daniel, and then yeah, they would be pushing the hundreds if uh, those those two things were adhered to. So, um, so basically, two things were missing. Indeed, yes. Uh, no, but in general, uh, on a serious note, very good. Uh, I think that is very true, actually, about the you know the young generation as well, and uh, similar to what Daniel said as well during that episode. Um, but if you want to watch the episode, <coughs> please click here. Yeah, go for it. And uh, I-, I want to say one thing, though. You know where it says, when you are a good person, you will automatically be resistant to evil and doing that, you are not, attract- not attracted to bad women. Uh, I think one thing that people overlook, although that is somewhat true, people, I think, overlook that you can find a bad uh, man, or you can find a uh, person who th- you think is good or you think is bad and they turn out not to be. Do you, do you understand? Because yeah, that's true. H- yeah. how are you meant to know? But if you'd like to leave a comment, um, you know, if you want to leave a comment with like the comments that you're seeing on screen right now, please do leave a comment where there is uh, something about the video, your own opinion. Uh, honestly, it's really uh, fun and exciting for us to read and to see and engage and interact with. So please do so. Um, and today's episode is actually based off a comment uh, on one of our posts. Um, I asked people to. Uh, give a suggestion or suggestions on topics that we can talk about um, and JD I wonder who that is uh, mentioned about trauma there were some who voted for conspiracy theories so I think we'll, we'll focus the topic today on um, bullying and trauma uh, so stick around okay because we're talking about bullying uh, I did put out a poll a couple of minutes ago before recording this episode and so far we've had four votes uh, and 75% of the votes said yes that they have been bullied Uh, 25% said no Uh, 0% so far have said it's never happened to them but they've seen it happen and 0% said it's still happening so that's that was posted 25 minutes ago from when we're recording this so let's see by the end of it uh, how many votes it has if you want to participate and you want to Give your answer in the poll. Just go to the community tab, like so, and click and vote. And then uh, we'll engage with you. Thank you very much. Uh, so bullying. We have covered this topic before. We've talked about it about school. We've talked about it at work and so on and so forth. So to begin, uh, obviously, we are gonna we want to recap some things. But uh, just in general, we've had the poll. So why don't I ask everyone here, uh, have you ever experienced bu- bullying in some form, whether that's personal towards yourself or whether that's you've seen it? Um, I don't know who to start with. Let's start with Garris. Yeah, I've been putting myself in primary and not really second, but primary. Remember, I said in the podcast before, 
cool episode, and yeah, obviously I've seen it as well. Okay, and what about you, Jamie? Um, <clears throat> are we giving the stories now or not? I'm just gonna say yeah. If you want to, yeah, you, you can. can right. Go so there was one time in primary school, uh, year six. So that's the highest year in primary school for me, anyway. Uh, we was splitting up each of the two. Basically, each year in primary school, there was two classes. So two for year one, two for year two. Blah blah blah. So year six. Um, we splitting the classes up, mixing the two classes around. I went over to the other class. We was on a table with whoever some of the boys in my class, maybe two other guys from the other class. We was in our groups doing our tasks. Got to about the last ten minutes of the day. Each of us on our on my table, we started to mess around like kids would. Uh, just light little jokes here and there. But then it started getting a bit more horrible, I guess. And then at some point. There's like three or four of them saying stuff to me. It's all switched to me all of a sudden, just four of them. It was year six, I was about maybe, what, nine or ten? Uh, they each started doing it first, I was just laughing it off, but then eventually it was getting too much, it was getting a bit more personal. And then I started getting upset, and then the teacher saw. I started crying, or tearing up, and then I put my um, the school jumper, I put it over my face as the teacher walked me out because I was embarrassed. <laughs> I was crying in front of the other girls in the other class. And the other guys, I just put my jumper over my face and the teacher walked me out. <laughs> <laughs> but there was then another time, and if it was before that or after that, we mixed it around again and I was in the in the other class again. But this time I was on the table, I think me and three of the girls from the other class. I think the two or three girls from the other class. And I don't know what came over me, like now, I was pulling out all the jokes, all the banner, and I was making them laugh. So and that might—I don't know if that was before or after. I hope it was after because then like redeemed myself. At first, he's a little crybaby, and then he was making the girls laugh. Um, and then other things from primary school was like other like normal things, just kids messing you around, pushing you around. Maybe they might take your bag or throw your coat onto the floor or something. Okay, so then my follow-up question is how long did that you know what was the after effect of that what was the result of all of that stuff um so it was one other kid in my actual class in year six it, um he was doing stuff for a while again he might push me he might call me names he might throw my stuff on the floor he might hit me kick me at one point i the teacher obviously saw that it was enough and it was going on for too long and i was getting it was winding me up and getting me upset um, see, they've called my mum and dad in, and then they've told him, oh, yeah, this boy, da-da-da-da. And they brought the, the boy who's been horrible to me, him and his dad in, to have a talk. And then, basically, my dad went up to his dad and basically said, whatever your son does to my son, I'm going to do to you. And he sort of scared him into, like, telling his son to stop being horrible to me. And he stopped. And then from that day after, from the day after that, he stopped and he was friends with me. He said sorry and made up. It was nice. But what I mean is, now that you've grown up, how much does that or those events, how much does it affect you? Does it affect you at all? No, not now. Is it something you really think about? Oh, when I went into <clears throat> secondary school, and then there's some BS that happened there, primary school actually felt like kids being kids. But obviously at the time, or just after going into secondary school, I thought they were just horrible. But obviously now, like, yeah, they were just kids being kids. Just being little... I can't say that. Just kids being kids, let's call it that. Messing around, being horrible. The reason why I ask is because when it comes to bullying, uh, obviously you took it in quite a nice way. I say nice way, you took it in a understanding mm -hmm. way, right? Kids being yeah. kids. But I'm sure you only understand that now. At the time, you probably felt like it was the end of the world, right? Or it was really awful. Um, but, you know, some people, bullying leads to a lot of trauma. And trauma is obviously when you kind of relive an experience you've had before um, and it stops you from doing regular things. Yeah. Uh, for example, like I've been bullied, I've been bullied before. <clears throat> and now there's certain type of people, certain types of people I stay away from. I don't go near them. Um, I've been bullied in like work settings as well. So again, there's certain types of people I still work with, but 
Can you? Yes. I don't really understand. Can you like give an example to general thing when you say bullied at workplace? Okay, so bullied at the workplace, singled out is called. Yeah, singled out means, uh, for example, you're getting along with your own work, you're getting along and doing your own things, your own work, and there's certain, or there was one certain person at this workplace. He would come up to me. And he would say random stuff like, oh, okay, remember, I'm a, I'm a teacher, right? So he'd say, um, oh, your students complained about you the other day. And they said such and such thing. And they, remember, this guy's not a manager. He's just a teacher, okay? So they said such and such things about you. I said, oh, okay, that's a bit strange because my teaching style is like fun and friendly, right? So there's no way a student is complaining about me unless I've, I don't know, for some reason, if I've uh, told them off or something, maybe. I've n I never used to tell anyone off. It was like I've probably done it six times my in six times in my entire career, yeah. <clears throat> but they're like, oh yeah, your student, your students complained. So then I said, okay, you know what? All right, I'll talk to them. I'll see like what what's happened, and I'll, I'll try to fix it because I was wondering what what's going on. I check with the students. They're like all fine, everything's fine. So I was like, okay, that's a bit weird. Then he does it again. Then he does it again, and then he does it again. Then he goes to other teachers, and he says, this teacher is like this, he's like that. I was, and I was new to teaching, yeah? So I had no idea, like, you know, what I'm doing wrong. No one's telling me. It's just this guy. My managers are not saying anything. They're doing my, what do you, it's called lesson observations. And, you know, they've, they're not finding anything wrong. Like, it's, it's all fine. They said I have really good connection with the kids and whatnot. But this guy keeps saying this stuff, yeah? <clears throat> what happened after a year... I kind of learned like stay away from him when he's there don't talk a lot because he's gonna pick on me whenever I used to give suggestions he used to speak out and say uh, I don't think that's a good idea for even if it was a good idea yeah and then this happened after one year I got promoted from just regular teacher to uh, let's just say I was like middle manager role yeah so I, I got to do more stuff okay and I had a bit more power now with that power came a lot of more work and what happened is I started doing a lot more work um, and there was a lot of projects I worked on, yeah? So I was working on these projects, and uh, there was this one project. It was a long-term project. I worked on it the entire summer, so July, August, September, October, November, December. I think around December, so it's like five months now, yeah? Six months of my work. Suddenly, I see the project. It's like on a main cloud platform. You know what I mean by cloud? Like it's online cool. online yeah. database, yeah? Oh, no. <clears throat> so it's on the online database and suddenly I go on everything's gone everything's deleted yeah and this thing from the from, from the from database, database from the database everything's gone only teachers and uh, the admin stuff only we have access and there is no need to delete this this stuff yeah there's no need to delete it and only we have access to it so I was like what like where's it gone now I'm trying to restore it it's gone forever gone forever gone forever and I was like, no way, this is gone, man. Six months, five to six months of hard work. Where is it gone? Who's done it, yeah? And then, um, what's it called? Um, oh, what did I do? I, I went to the managers and I said, listen, I've this thing that I've worked on. The, the other problem was because I was the, the guy in charge of this, yeah? And in all honesty, no one in that workplace knew what I was doing, meaning they didn't know how to do that. It was kind of like I had experience in these kind of project stuff so I was doing it and I was showing them what I'm doing but they don't know how to manage it or they don't know what kind of effort I'm putting into it so for them it's just like oh yeah he's getting on with it so when I went to them they were not understanding and then I flipped it and I was like listen this work took me five to six months it's gone I need to know why it's gone because I never deleted it and then I checked yeah there was this I did some next level BTEC hacking yeah went backtracked and you can I somehow found out who deleted it yeah and all it says is it's a teacher account. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and I was like, it's a teacher account. Okay. Then I'm gonna um, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Yeah. I went through in my head all of the teachers in the school. I was like, would he do it? Would he do it? Would he do it? Would he do it? I then went around to each teacher, went to them directly. I said, did you delete this? Did you delete this? All the teachers, I remember their faces. Yeah. They never seen me like that. So they're just like, no, 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 I didn't delete it. No, why would I do that? Da da da. And the one teacher I didn't go to, I didn't go to him because I, obviously I was still like uncomfortable to go around him because, you know, the way he was, yeah. So I didn't go to him. All the other teachers, I just believed them for a second, for a reason, sorry. 
So what I did is I, on the teacher's group chat, we had a group chat. I sent a message. I said, I am contacting Google and I'm going to find out who's deleted all of these because one of you, you know, normally when you send messages in a workplace, you, you, you stay a bit more composed. Yeah. yeah? But this one, yeah. I knew there was something malicious behind it. I wasn't exposing anyone. I was just like, if you message me privately and you tell me you've done it either by accident or by purpose, it's not a problem. I just want to know uh, who's done it because there is a way to recover it. Yeah. Which is a lie. There's no way to recover it. Okay. I just needed to know. And I, I was like, okay. So then after what happens, <clears throat> the search there, um, I waited, waited. 15 minutes later, that teacher messages me and he goes, oh, I was clearing out some files and I deleted that. And I said, there is no way you are clearing out files and you deleted that. You have to go one by one and you have to delete each of those posts and it's nothing related to your files. It doesn't affect your memory. It doesn't do anything. Why did you do that? Yeah. And then he couldn't explain himself, obviously. And then I took it to the managers. I said, look, this has been going on. The bullying as well. There's more stuff. I don't want to mention everything. But the, this guy was for one and a half years now just on my case constantly constantly on my case then i asked around and i found out why he was on my case he was on my case because i was pretty much taking his job apparently before i arrived he used to do most of the youth work he used to work with this kind of creative stuff side and when i came with my ideas he just like couldn't take it apparently but he i don't know man like i i took it to the managers and then they must have spoken to him and i think he was doing some other stuff wrong anyway and then they got rid of him after that but Honestly, till this day, when I, um, I remember because of his words at the start, yeah, when it comes to teaching, there's certain times, like, I know what I'm doing is perfect, I know what I'm doing, I'm doing the best work, yeah, but when I remember, like, the way he used to come to me and he used to say, oh, yeah, I don't think you're doing that right, oh, the kids are getting affected, sometimes when I'm teaching, that comes into my head that, if I say that, am I actually affecting the kids, and the kids never ever complain to me and say oh sir you're affecting our mental health nothing the kids are always like oh you're the best teacher or, la, 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 la. you know they're quite yeah. nice to me yeah but th that is always in the back of my mind because he put it there yeah and uh, you know like when i do hard work i'm like okay let me save this 17 times because if someone deletes my hard work five months of work is gone every single time i work on something big or every single time i'm teaching these two things are always in the back of my mind and it's so irritating uh, but obviously, uh, you know, as time passed, because that was that was many years ago, yeah. As time passed, yeah, I, I managed to get over it. But I kind of see it as, you know, like the backup savings and stuff. I see it as a precaution that I'm taking rather than, oh, I'm still scared that that's going to happen or whatever, you know. Um, but those couple of years that I did affect me, those were the most annoying years of my life because I knew I shouldn't second guess myself. And it did stop me a little bit from doing you know reaching my potential and that's what gets on my nerves so that's why i ask you know like any of the bullying that you have experienced or you have an experience uh you know does it affect you at all like i can i can keep talking by the way yeah i can i can talk about there's students who's affected me i can talk about a university there's a guy who uh used to pick on me there's so many instances i could talk about of bullying and you know what bullying isn't always someone shoving you into a corner punching you up kicking you breaking your phone you know all of that stuff we've talked about this in what episode five or something school fights and stuff bullying isn't always like that sometimes bullying is the you know the mini things the small yeah, ones the little things. that they come and they uh, the little things that they plant in your brain and the plant uh, the seed that they plant is just like growing 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 and then how does it grow instantly you don't just switch off and become a depressed person and just lie down on your sofa and start crying what it does is it breaks you down the way you work will change the way you talk to people changes the way you think changes the things that you decide to do in your life changes every single little minuscule thing in your life is suddenly affected and that's the most frustrating part about that sort of bullying the mental psychological bullying so uh do you know what i mean like jamie for example you're you're kind of saying yeah yeah is that because you that's like something you've seen or seen from someone else or in yourself or anything like that little things but they happen over time like daily or every other day so it all gradually builds up and eventually in the event it builds up and eventually affects them in the long run there's either a massive thing they do one day that might embarrass someone in front of maybe everyone in the cafeteria for example or they may like these things the little small thing like maybe a little nudge a little barge might take this stuff and throw it around the classroom. I say in the winter time, yeah. However, I bring in a scarf 
they take the scarf and they start throwing it around. It was like in the class, there was like four or five of them in a group that was all friends. One person would do it and then obviously there's peer pressure. They'd all jump in. Oh, look, look, he's a little, he can't join in. He, oh, look, he has to try and save me or look after me. So everyone starts joining in. He throws it to one person, he throws the scarf to the next person. Or while the teacher's at the front, facing the whiteboard, writing down on the computer or whatever. Because there's like five or six of them scattered around the class, they can throw it around. And then everyone else being the gals they were, they wouldn't get up and like, hey, stop giving back the scarf. They just sit there and crack on. So there's like five or six of them throwing around the scarf to him, and then throws it to him, throws it to him, throws it to him, throws it to him. And eventually he throws it to the guy right at the back of the class next to the bin. There's the door. And he just throw it in the bin. Obviously, I've got up, no one's helping. So I've got up, I'm walking around the class, like, oh, give me my scarf. And the teacher's like, oi, who's talking there? Shush, whatever one I'm writing. And then eventually, the teacher would eventually turn around and see me standing at the back of the door, either trying to rip my scarf out of his house or hand, as he's holding it, like, you're not getting it, you're not getting it, laughing or whatever, or throws it in the bin. I've got to go in, take my scarf out of the bin, and like rub off the crap off of it, whatever's from the bin. And obviously, everyone's sitting down, so we didn't see, the teacher didn't see them make noise and see me standing up and then they shout at me and tell me off like oh Jamie why are you standing up sit down do your work so it's BS like that they they won't get away with it so they throw it around to each other and the teacher just so luckily just turns around at the moment I'm up grabbing my scarf from the bin or trying to rip it out of one of my son's hands stuff like that or like I said they do one big thing in the in the canteen or embarrassing start fighting you in the playground or whatever on the field so there's more than one way to get into someone's head so then my my question is yeah like so you said they didn't they done all this stuff they took stuff off you and stuff so is there always if i can ask this yeah if is there always a thought in the back of your head that people aren't nice on the surface or like someone's always gonna do you wrong or, or anything like that is there ever any thought like that so after secondary school happened blah 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 even june secondary school Maybe in different classrooms at lunchtime, if you went on school trips, after secondary school, college, and stuff like that, especially in college. Because I've had so many of these people from school and stuff. The second I saw someone, anything, anything resembling these people from school, I'd eventually just keep my distance because they look like him. You'd expect him to be like that. Jay, sorry, Jay, you to interrupt. I have one question, you know. You know, we just said now, like the people who bullied you. Like, if they physically look like that, you'd, like, stay away from them. Did that happen to, like, me and Daniel when we were in college? Like, did you look at us? Did, did it remind you of, like, did we look similar to the buddies? And did you, be like, did you, like, stay away at the beginning or not? That's, that's just my question. I did it with literally everyone. That was fresh out, so literally everyone. Maybe maybe one or two people, but literally everyone. I just instantly assumed because it was fresh out. So I was, like, the guard was up. Yeah, you know, Daniel a bit more than you. But, yeah, still, I did every everyone. Unless they like wasn't that absolute. So I still do it to this day. I'm not gonna lie. Still to this day. Yeah, but I don't really blame. Like even to this day, right now you do. I don't blame you because it's affected you and it's traumatized you. Well, obviously you're like over it, but in so clearly from what you're saying, in some way or form, it's still there and it? it's still affecting you. Because you think, oh yeah, everyone's fine. You walk up to someone, no thing at all, and then something happens. So it's like almost you need to. Well, I feel like that anyway. You need to have some sort of paranoia. Like walking down the street, you think, oh, yeah, everyone's fine. I just walk up to him and he whips out a knife and he robs you. Well, if you didn't have that paranoia, then you wouldn't have went up to him and something could have happened. So I feel like it's a, me- it's a must and you should have some sort. Not to the point where you actually panic. Oh, I can't go outside. I think someone's going to do something. But have that little thing like, okay, this guy, he, he could do something. So just be careful. Obviously, if it's to the point where it's like, I can't go outside, everyone I look at, I think they're going to do something, that's an issue. But like with mine... That's when you do, when you need to seek, uh, what's it, is it professional, what's it, what do you call it, professional, but yeah, what's the term for it? Just a therapist or someone, basically. Oh, medical. Yeah, so it's like, not like, a, as I said, not to a point where you're panicking and you can't continue with your normal day. No, obviously, you know, everyone has to know. I understand what you're saying, but because of your... Let's say your past trauma, bullying, etc. Obviously, you're gonna have a more precaution than normal human beings when they just have a normal people like strangers outside. I'd say I'm at a normal level, maybe a teeny bit more than normal. 
but still, I'm at a normal. That's what I'm saying. A, t- yeah, a tiny bit drastic. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I was like that at one point. Where I was like, yeah. I didn't want to go out at all. So then, uh, what that reminds me of, Jamie, by the way, uh, you know, when you said about the way you look at people that they might stab you or, you know, not, you can't really trust everyone. Honestly, I've bought cars from people um, and, uh, you know, they broke my trust. I sold a car to someone, broke my trust. Um, and, the, and these are all really? random people. Yeah, 100%, bro. I'm telling you, yeah. They, and you know you know what um, is annoying? I for remember me? one story that you said. I don't know if you said it to me or the podcast, but I remember the one story. That's about it. What's the, what's the story? Looked messed up when you were going to buy a car, but you didn't buy a car because of the way you was living. Oh yeah, no, that was on the that was on the podcast. No, not that. What I was, what I'm talking about is you know um there's a guy he his dad knows my brother and they work together in a mosque and and uh, you know he <clears throat> wanted to buy the car and he was like listen bro yeah you can trust me you're um you know I you know my dad you know you know me and stuff. I said no. I I know your dad. I don't know. I know his dad. I worked with his dad. So I know your dad. I don't know you. So you know that's not gonna work with me. And then his dad was like, "Yeah, no, no, no. It's fine. It's fine." Then my brother's like, "No, just trust him in it." Like you know, thing. Eventually, it's not anyone else's fault. It's my fault. I should have stuck to my guns, but I didn't. Then he took the car. We agreed on a certain amount, and then he came back, and then he didn't give me the amount. He his dad actually came and delivered the money, and his dad gave me. Uh, the amount that like can you say the amount but even uh, I'm, I'm not i'm not gonna lie yeah no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i remembering it is actually vexing me up and this is what i mean by trauma you know remembering it and the fact that i remember him lying to my face yeah and it's pissing me off because i'm just like i remember you used god's name you said allah you said wallahi you said all of that stuff like on what oh, did. on what oh. you know what kind of what kind of authority did you think that you're going to scam me? And what kind of authority did you think you're going to do that? And on top of that, how, like, how dare you send your dad to my house and then give the money to your dad after doing all of that? And then your dad says, you know what? This guy, by the way, I'm just, I'm just going to say this out loud. This guy's around 30 years old, yeah? The guy who scammed, not the dad, the, the actual guy. He's around 30, 28, 30. He's coming, his dad's coming to me and saying, oh, he's young. You know, he doesn't understand. That's why he missed me. But... Wallahi guys I'm telling you I looked at his dad Straight in the eyes I thought You you work at a mosque You work at a masjid You know Not to give me stupid Excuses like that Yeah And then on top of that I was, I was just like I, How are you And then on top of that The guy he The dad gives me the money The agreed amount is not there There's still £10 less And I contacted the guy I said look The agreed amount You didn't give me The agreed amount At least that £10 I, Obviously right now Whoever's listening £10 might not seem like a lot But imagine you had An initial agreed amount That's not done And then now the £10 This guy scammed me Because For what? Because oh, I don't know him I only know his dad And wallahi You know what? I, no I'm, I shouldn't say this But sometimes You know the heart Curses people I won't ever say out loud But you know The heart curses people And sometimes you feel like you know, like, why did you do that? What on For a couple of extra pounds, why did you do that? What was the need? And you know when his dad came and said that to me, that, oh, yeah, you know. Um, it's pissing me off. He's not young. 30, 20, 20 whatever. Late, late 20s is not young. Exactly. Like him saying, oh, you know, he's younger. He doesn't understand. I'm just thinking, I'm I'm 15 years or 10 years younger than this guy. What do you mean by he's younger? Am I, I'm the young one. How am I understanding that you're not meant to do that to people? And I just, you know what? My brother, many times my brother said, you leave it. Just leave it. Just leave it. You know, his dad's, uh, you know, nice guy, whatever. Honestly, I just, I just, till this day, I think, I don't care if his dad's a nice guy. I don't know. I don't know him. You know, why did he do that? And that's why... I'm telling you, there's certain specific group of people, like what Jamie said, when he sees people who look like that. When I see people who look like that, till this day, I don't care. When I see someone who looks like that, I don't trust. I don't trust you. When I see people who uh, look like that, I don't. I don't trust any business with them. I don't trust them to do anything for me. Nothing. Uh, for the rest of my life, I feel like I'm not gonna trust anyone who looks like that or any stranger who looks like that. You know. I'm not going to lie, it's actually some miracle that you three are even my uh, friends because the the kind of stuff that I've experienced before and the, the way that my trust was broken before, honestly, this, it's like a miracle that we're mates because it's my the barrier that I had, <clears throat> even though I'm quite a trusting person, by the way, yeah? 
quite a trusting person i'm quite easy going relaxed i don't think about things too deeply but sometimes you know what jamie said about the you know when you look at certain people honestly yeah if it, it, it's it's just a miracle that's that's the easiest way to put it it's a miracle that i'm i'm i have three good friends and my trust went, went somewhere because this kind of stuff i'm telling you it sticks and then i can even like i said i can go into more topics there's there's people I've worked with, you know, they showed me one face and then behind my back they were doing something else. And they say one thing face to my double face. face. Yeah, they say one thing to my face and then behind my back face, to, some, to someone to someone else, they say, they're saying something else about me. And I'm like, and, and then get, they got me done, you know, at work and they got me in trouble. And then in the end, I cleared my name. Yeah, that's the that's the best part. At least in this one, I won something because I got to clear my name. But like, why? Why? Why do you do that to people? And then the people, like, for the rest of my life, it could be for the rest of my life that that's how I look at the world. That's how I interact with people, engage with people. Luckily, I don't say luckily. You know, um, you know, it's always all uh, meant to happen as it's planned, right? But the way I talk to people, engage with people, the kind of person I am. I had to because of the good company that I have, especially um, having a clo the close friend and the close friends that I have. <clears throat> that is the most important thing. If I didn't have that support around me, if I didn't have people asking me, checking up on me after a couple of days, oh, how come you haven't messaged me? It's been three hours. Just an example, yeah. Like what you guys do. Um, if I didn't have that support and if I didn't have reasons to trust yeah there, there's not a single human i would trust i wouldn't trust a single person whether that's a, a young person or an old person or a middle-aged person or nothing i would not trust a single soul because why <clears throat> all i feel like at times even though it's just one or two or three instances i feel like my entire life i've just been surrounded by untrustworthy people but it's not like that okay so it's very important although you go through difficult stuff it's really important look take a step back okay maybe like that marriage comment that we discussed at the start if you hang around bad places you get you know you with bad people and if you hang around good places you're with good people you know maybe that situation in my life i was just around the a bad person or bad people or that was just a bad person who came to me and i didn't know okay and i needed to learn i needed to go through that difficulty in order to learn the difference between a good person and a and a bad person and you know what that's okay because that's that's helped me grow now my eyes will never uh, betray me i will never look at someone and think oh that's a good person because i'm looking yeah my ears will never betray me uh my brain won't ever betray me because guess what they've already been trained up now and that's that's how i see it in um summary i feel like you can sometimes use a, your trauma <clears throat> if you can call it that by the way i'm saying trauma as if it's trauma it might not be trauma it could just be you know memories but I feel like you can use your trauma as a self-defense mechanism and use your trauma to actually help you. Because now I can filter between people. And it's a skill. It's actually like a superpower I have that I can look at someone and be like, nah, you know what? Nah, that's the, that's no good. I'm not. I'm staying away from you. And I can look at other, other things and be like, oh, that's that's really good for me. You know, by no means is am I a professional at that. I'm just saying I'm definitely better at it. It's, than you're I, than you're I was. based off your experience and stuff. And I guess other people around you as well. Exactly. And um, so, uh, Jamie, you were mentioning something earlier before I, I think I cut you off. Um, so what would you say in in relation to what I've just... Yes, exactly what, how I've done it, exactly how I still do it. As I said, not to a point where you can't go outside and do fun stuff or you're stuck inside because of things that is built up that much and that badly. It's just, just enough so you can go and enjoy yourself. Not be thinking and panicking or whatever, like, but still have a little thing in the back of your head. Like you said, like a little superpower, like a little shield, like the like knights and stuff and soldiers. You might have a little shield, might have body armor. It's kind of like that, just a little thing to protect yourself. And even if it does happen, at least she was aware. I don't know if I've said it on podcast. I've said it off camera about the expecting the worst as like a skill. So if you go in somewhere and something goes bad, expect the worst. Again, not in a way where you're panicking about it. Just sitting there, standing there, going in thinking, this is what's going to happen. This is the worst that can happen. And if and sh you should expect to, for it to happen. So that if it does happen, the trick is that you're not going to be let down or upset or get annoyed 
I was like, oh, see, I thought this was going to happen. It happened. So you either be at your, where you are, the level you're at, or you're going to feel better. So if you go in expecting something to be bad and it doesn't happen, it's good. Then you'll see, oh, I didn't expect that. That's good. If you go in thinking oh, it's going to be great, it's going to be amazing, like I have done, and stuff will go bad, you're like, well, this is a waste of time or, you know, I'll, I wish I didn't do it now. So, so you expect the worst and you're either at the same level where you are or you're going to feel better. You're never going to be let down or feel worse than you do or than you did going in. So that's it with people. Expect someone to be horrible and if it happens, you're not going to be annoyed basically because you expected it and you thought it was going to happen. If it doesn't, then obviously it's better or normal. The trick is to basically not get let down. So, Jamie, um, there's another direction I wanted to ask you, kind of similar to mine. Um, and, Gareth, I should ask you as well, because uh, all three of us have said we experience bullying in some way, yeah? Uh, but, Jamie, you know, anything you've experienced, it doesn't have to be bullying from school. It could be from work or family or wh- whatever, you know, or other instances. But do you think the job you're doing now or the life you're living right now or way your brain works or the you know the the fact that you're introverted or extroverted whichever uh do you think that's come from past experiences and if uh, if yes then why uh i'd say 50 50 yes as it has affected me in some way so that has shaped who i am but then also how i am is how i am other than that obviously i'd be a bit more better if stuff that's happened before didn't happen but I feel kind of uh, I'd still be like this in a way if it either didn't happen at all or didn't happen as bad. So I'd say yes, it's 50-50. Do you ever blame anyone else or do you blame yourself? Or? Uh, again, both. I blame myself and other people. But now, because of those things that's happened, uh, you can learn from them, move forward with that new knowledge that you gained to either prevent something from happening or at least if something happens again, similar or the exact same, you dealt with it before, so now you're ready. Uh, so, Gareth, what about you? Have you? Do you think? Look, it doesn't have to be bullying, because we are focusing on trauma as well, right? Do you think anything in your personal life that's happened to you impacts the way you look at the world today, or the way you engage and interact with the world today? Yeah, it, it does affect me. It doesn't affect me to the point where <clears throat> I, the way, like what you said, the way you engage with people, the way you look at people. It's just, I guess, um, like, personal experience, you know? So, for example, I lost my dad when I was five. And uh, in my life right now, I don't have a father figure. So I just miss that part of my life, um, you know, that I don't get to share my uh, like the good, like, have good times, memories, like, how do you say, academic achievements, you can say. And even, like, right now, go a car. Like, you know, it would, it would be, like, a nice feeling, a nice, like, memory, you know. Like, oh, you know, my son's driving me, you know. And also, like, growing up as well, innit? it? So it's just, for me, it's that aspect of life, which is very hard. Obviously, like, um, I don't know, obviously, everyone experiences death, but I don't know, how they feel but of course you're gonna miss the person of course you're gonna you're gonna be like oh you know i want to do this but i can't because they're not here or you're gonna have like there's no other replacement for that um position so throughout your whole life you're gonna miss them you just have to live with it move on and yeah and for me i guess i have to be my own father figure i mean you're how old are you right now i'm 21 turning 22 not this coming sunday next sunday so 22, yeah, basically, yeah, let's just say 22. For a 22-year-old um, studying the degree that you're doing for before without any kind of familial influence on you or forcing you, you know, like some parents force people to do a certain degree and stuff. You're working, looking after yourself, your family, you got a good group of friends, the way you, that you manage yourself. I, I don't, this is what I was talking about, about, you can use that emptiness or, you know, that, emotion that you're feeling and use it Mm. to do good right and that's what you've done i feel like because you could have easily just as much when you feel those feelings you could easily curl up into a ball and go to sleep 
or you can curl up into a ball yeah, and, 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 say, and also go down a, like a bad path in life and just turn all the way left yeah um you could start seeking people's uh what's the word validation validation yeah. <laughs> let's go so you know um you know like for example when you don't have a parent this is like psychological yeah when you don't have one parent uh be it father or mother there's certain attitudes and behaviors that you don't receive and you need it in order to grow okay and the fact that you're not kind of down a wrong path you stayed strong with you know everything um you know that's that's saying something that's a good thing that's a really good thing so no i'll, I'll be honest here it's literally it's literally religion because of religion and my faith literally that's it like you know i have the faith that one day i'm going to see my dad you know hmm. like for um, me religion is a big factor which is why i'm coping with it uh and then, but i wanted to ask one last thing for for that branch of the questions yeah which is so then um you know like we we're talking about you know your mom and dad play a certain role in your life right so not having mm. your dad there you you said you said that um uh, how did you say it? you said that you know you wanted to take him out in your car and yeah you know, share your oh, accomplish- yeah, that was reason, accomplishments that's one of the reasons feelings i've had yeah yeah so you wanted to share your accomplishments yeah your accomplishments that's um, the word accomplishments yeah academically or, or even in social life so apart from accomplishments is there like for example do you find maybe that you try to fill in the gaps like fill in that position um with other things be it extra work or, so, or something like that i guess yeah i mean not both but i think like subconsciously everything i've been through i try to help for other people like my family or friends like the experience i went through in life and what i've learned and how to cope with feelings better and stuff how to, how to deal with situations better and feelings and how you should shouldn't keep and talk it out i just tell them what's what's the right thing to do and you know look after yourself and mental health is very important so yeah which normally i guess a father would say isn't it so then the my last question would be um there's someone listening so, so we can look at our demographics yeah if we look at the demographics of who watches our youtube videos who listens to our spotify uh first of all uh people are listening from all over the world okay which is amazing because we're just we're worldwide four, now isn't it four, yeah because we're just worldwide. four people right we're just four people having sad boy hours online <laughs> um, <laughs> but on top of that the age groups range from people who are really young so even under 18 and it goes all the way up to people who are 60 years old okay really yeah so i checked our Bro. demographics and I was, I was so surprised to see that that's our demographic so do we not have middle, middle, middle age? Uh, yeah, from from young age to old yeah, age, oh. I'm saying. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, to I, I don't like saying old. I feel I feel yeah. mean. No, I say old. So from young age to gold age, yeah. But um, gold age, the, gold. You're 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 entering the gold ages, mate. Yeah, the, the gold ages. I'm entering the silver ages right now. I've got white hairs growing. Um, <laughs> but what you know for for people who are new to let's say what Jamie was experiencing. Or people who are entering the stage of what I experienced at work. Or maybe people who are much older and they've got an entire life that they are reflecting back on. Yeah. Um, what advice can we give to just help people going? What what's the what's the one thing you could say to, to help I think just keep going on with life. Yeah, what or... what advice could you give some to someone who is just not coping right now with, with trauma or with something they've experienced? So don't keep stuff and stuff. I don't know if any of us has re- uh, said this in any of our podcasts but you know it just build up and then there'll be a point where you can't it just explode and it, you're already going through the trauma will just make it worse so always tell someone well, it's up to you you want to tell um talk to friends family because because you're going through that trauma you wouldn't know how to handle it so when you tell the other person whoever you're telling maybe they've you don't know maybe they've gone through it yourself you're not going to know until you literally get out of your chest and go and sit down and have a chat or online you get me so they can help you and even if they haven't went for it they maybe know how they can help you uh, how you can cope with it you know uh i would i agree with the guys but i would just tiny thing i'll just add <clears throat> uh and i've said it before use uh trauma 
uh, remember the human body we're like we're like a machine we're constantly learning that tiny little brain upstairs is just learning 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 right uh, whether you're learning a good thing or whether you're learning from from a bad thing uh, is meant to protect you okay usually that's what it's for so something bad happens the reason you feel trauma the reason you feel scared uh, the reason you feel sweaty uh, nervous is because your body is trying to protect itself okay that's the sign not scientific sorry that's the like mechanical response that our body does okay for example when you're about to go on a stage and say something or perform the reason your palms are sweaty knees weak arms are heavy there's vomit on your sweater already mom's spaghetti the reason for that is because you are <laughs> your body is saying listen something's gonna go wrong people are gonna laugh at you people are gonna make fun of you and then mentally that's gonna hurt you and your body's telling you that you're gonna get hurt you're gonna get hurt and that's why it's protecting you but the point is you're not gonna get hurt you're going to do perfectly fine. You're going to do just fine. If you're going to smash it. Yeah, you're going to smash out of the roof. 100%. Like people who are doing uni right now, like uh, Daniel uh, Garris. Um, uh, oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah. Um, people who are doing uni right now, if you've got a dissertation, because this is the time for assignments and exams to kick in, right? If you've got a dissertation, assignments, exams, look, you've done so much hard work. You've gotten to this point. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to worry about. You got this. You'll smash it. Uh, you know, if you've got other exams, GCSEs, whatever, this is the time you've worked hard. Stay cool, stay calm, and go for it. That's it. And you can do that with everything else in life. Don't uh, worry uh, about things too much. Okay? Um, uh, yeah, before I you story... add, I want to add, I want, I want to yeah. add something here. Yeah, uh-huh. I kind of when you guys were talking. So, you know, with this whole therapy thing, like, especially in the Asian community, like I've seen, yeah, when um, they mention therapy, they're like, oh, it's not good, this, that, you know, and they just say some BS things, I guess. Nonsense like things, what? isn't it? What do you mean? So they'll say stuff like, oh, you don't need that. What will other people oh, that's say? Oh, your thing, Garris. Uh, you know. In Sri Lanka. So, especially in the Asian community, which I'm pretty sure, you know, comment down below, but a lot of people can really relate, whether you're like, thinking to go therapy or you go and talk to your parents anyone yeah they say oh you don't need that and just come off some nonsense but if you truly and really think you need it then go for it and don't be scared by whether it's yourself or you know your parents they're not going to understand you and we all know this because they're from a different generation on top of that they're from you know back home and they're not going to understand uh how you feel that's how most asian parents are they don't understand their own kids so yeah don't be scared don't be both by it and educate your parents and if you want to educate your parents your friends your family the best way to do it is to subscribe to this podcast and share it with them um make sure you leave a like look uh we love hearing from you we love reading your comments so what are you waiting for go to the comments right now to uh, discuss uh what we've discussed about today if you know us personally talk about not only here on our socials as well you can talk about you yeah go you know go you to the instagram post, any TikTok, posts, yeah comment on the post you guys are too shy I, I no 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 you know that is not to say that people haven't commented people have commented some really funny stuff uh we did one poll about how to pronounce water and people hmm. wrote quite a lot in the water water um uh debate uh someone said water yeah <laughs> i think that was that was my favorite water um but yeah you know um game vote talk to us discuss it's called lads talk but everyone's welcome to talk with us now before we go to the quote of the week uh, i just checked the polls i think one more person has voted and they voted for yes as well that they have experienced bullying in some form keep it up keep uh, voting there are so many polls down below if you've missed some scroll down all the way to the bottom get involved comment it helps our videos as well and it helps us understand what you guys want to talk about what you guys like um you know last episode we put a poll and asked what your thoughts are and some people said the episode was too long so we we're gonna learn is that what they said so, um, so one or two people said it was a bit too long so uh, i received some other um comments about the video which is uh which is good we we want to learn and we want to keep growing and uh, we're happy to grow uh from your comments as well so please do subscribe please do share Okay, and the quote of the week this week is a deep one, but it's one that we all need to hear, uh, be it because uh, of how we talk and interact and engage with others or just for ourselves. 
But remember, there are wounds that never show on the body that are deeper and more hurtful than anything that bleeds. So we will leave you with that thought to reflect on. Um, and yes, that is it from us. Uh, and we will be seeing you next time. Bye. And oh, what's that icon over there? That is the subscribe button. Press it. Mm. And there's two videos, one on the left. Oh, there's two on the left, one on the top, one on the bottom. Click either one. I think one's a playlist. Click the playlist. We want the views. Thank you very much. See you next time.